Well, I mean, first of all, the main problem for the f past several years, what we've done as Americans, we spent a lot of money we didn't have to buy foreign products that we can't afford. We've run up an, an enormous debt to the rest of the world. We've got nothing to show for it. You know, it's, it's, it's analogous to an individual. He loses his job, and instead of getting another job, uh, he simply buys everything on a credit card, and then, he, and then he shows his wife his credit card bills and says, you know, look, honey, look how great we're doing. We've just been going on a consumption binge where we borrow money like drunken sailors from the rest of the world and blow it. You know, we're, we're selling off uh, our, our cows and our chickens, uh, you know, to, to, to buy milk. I mean, we're mortgaging a farm, and, and, and foreigners are repossessing these assets. And, you know, this is how nations bankrupt themselves. We're, we're selling off productive, income-producing assets to enjoy current consumption. You know, rather than the recession being resisted, it should really be embraced because the disease is all this debt finance consumption. Huh. The cure is that we stop consuming and start saving and producing again, and that's a recession. And sometimes, you know, medicine tastes bad, but you've got to swallow it. Now, very quickly to explain business cycles and how they work, contrary to what most people think, the boom is the problem. The bust is the solution. A boom is like an artificial high, like if you take heroin, and you know you shoot yourself up with heroin and you know it feels really great at least that's what they tell me but anyway that's artificial you want to get healthy right you want to then you got to go to rehab or detox and you go cold turkey you, and you go through withdrawal the withdrawal symptom is very unpleasant very painful again that's what I hear but it's necessary if you want to remove these toxins from your system and get healthy. The same thing happens in the business cycle. When you have a central bank, and the central banks made the same mistakes in the 1920s, when you have monetary policy too inflationary, and you create an asset bubble, you create malinvestments, the malinvestments need to be purged. The economy needs to be rebalanced. You know, it's like if you're a heroin addict and you want to get healthy, you can't do that without going through withdrawal. The withdrawal symptoms are not fun, but the government's solution is shoot up with more heroin so that we can delay the withdrawal. But of course, they, they risk killing the economy with an overdose, which is what we might get. And an overdose, as far as fiscal monetary stimulus, is hyperinflation. Right. And believe me, that's a real possibility, and we do not want to live through that. You know, if you're an American citizen and you have U.S. currency, you've got a bullseye on your back and you're in Ben Bernanke's crosshairs. He's shooting at you. You've got to escape the real risk. It's not the taxpayers who are going to be bearing the brunt of this. It's savers. It's people who have U.S. currency anywhere in the world. Peter, I know you didn't want a rate cut today, but you got one. Were you expecting one? I was expecting one. And, you know, for the Halloween metaphor, it was certainly a treat for me. My gold stocks today are up four times as much as the Dow. It's a, unfortunately, it's a trick for everybody else who's measuring their wealth in dollars and thinks they made money today. It feels like a recession because we're in one. You know, I'm not going to go by the government numbers. If the government weatherman tells me it's sunny outside and I look out the window and it's raining, you know, I'm going to take an umbrella. A kid tells his teacher he has a straight A policy, but he, he skips class and he doesn't study. He's not going to get A's just by saying he has a policy. Tell me you about know, it. That the, was the, my the, life. The Treasury <laughs> can say they got a strong dollar policy all they want, but if we got Ben Bernanke, the base in the money, you know, it's going to go down. Remember, this, is, this wasn't created by the free market. All this excess leverage is there because of the government. It's there because of the Fed. They did this. They infected us with this disease. The fact that all these companies are now How dying. How make Wells Fargo make stupid home equity loans? They, what they did is they provided Wells I mean, Fargo well, Lama, and all me. these companies with free money, and they let them go out and, and leverage it up. And it's like I use the analogy, if, you go, if a kindergarten school teacher leaves the classroom and passes out pixie sticks and po soda pop and then leaves the classroom and she comes back and the, and the kindergartners have wrecked the place, who do you blame? The reason we have a flood is because Alan Greenspan blew up the dam. You know, the whole thing is ridiculous. It's like picture a senior prom and you got the chaperone pouring liquor into the punch bowl. And then, the, you know, you got the, the, the prom goers, you know, acting, you know, rude and, you know, they make, cause they're all drunk. Well, who are you going to blame? I mean, are you going to blame teenagers for, you know, acting crazy when they get drunk? Or are you going to blame the guy that spiked the punch bowl? So rather than focusing their, their, their anger on Wall Street. The spiker, you think, is the Federal the Reserve Fed. and Wall Street are the, are yeah, the well, kids yes. drinking the punch. Yes. The bailout, I see this as just stopping the plane from falling out of the sky. Is this yeah. naive of me? 
I, I think so. You know, the problem is our pilot and our co-pilot, Bernanke and, and, and Paulson, don't know how to fly. I mean, they're blind. They're drunk. You know, they're going to crash this plane even faster. You know, they say we have to do this. They said we have to go into Iraq because they had weapons of mass destruction. They, they were wrong. This, this plan is a weapon of mass destruction to destroy our economy and to destroy our currency. So, you know, also the problem is this crisis can't be managed. We need the free market. You've got these cronies in Washington. They're like little kids with a chemistry set. Yeah. And they keep on throwing these chemicals together, trying one thing after another. They hope they're going to stumble on a miracle, but they're going to blow us all up. No, it's, it's, it's a disaster, not just down the road, but right now. You know, everybody is sugarcoating this and glossing over it. Look at what President Bush said today. He said all the evidence points to a soft landing in housing. I don't know how he can say that with a straight face. I mean, the evidence points to a crash landing. I mean, this is the Hindenburg. Every time I turn on the TV, there's Paulson reassuring the American public that the underlying oh, economy is sound. You know, it's like you go to your doctor and he tells you you're in excellent uh -huh. health, but I just want to perform open heart surgery just in case. You know, what we're really doing is the equivalent of selling our financial souls to the devil. You know, it's, it's Henry Paulson and Ben Bernanke. They're the Pied Pipers that led us down this path. Now they're going to lead us over a cliff. Well, I mean, these are the guys we want to now uh, turn over. You talk about the inmates running the asylum. These guys were in denial the whole way. They don't understand the fundamentals of economics. They have no idea why we're in this mess. In fact, they're the ones that lit the fire. We're they're not going to put it out. No, I can't imagine a secretary being worse than Paulson. You know, they might as well nominate my six-year-old to be Treasury Secretary. You know, at least, I mean, he, at least he would play with his toys instead of screwing up the economy. Oh, the government can't do anything. Just putting the right person in the head of the secretary, it's like it didn't matter who you put on the bridge of the Titanic. The ship was going to sink because it was structurally damaged. Our economy is in trouble. We have a phony economy. We have to allow it to collapse so we can rebuild a genuine one. America's future, we think it's secure because no, it's, it's still no, strong. It's you not don't. strong. It's a facade. It's a house of cards, right. and it's about to cave in. you got to read my to, book, Steve. To, People still are, are confused. They think that America is the engine that drives the global train. We're not. We're the caboose. And, in fact, we're dead weight. And as soon, as soon as the rest of the world can sever that caboose, the rest of the train will move a lot faster. Assume that a group of uh, castaways are stranded on, a, on an island. Let's say five of them are Asian and one of them is an American. And when they get, they're stranded on this island, they have to divvy up the, the workload. So one of the Asians is given the job of hunting and looking for meat. Another one is going to be fishing, trying to catch fish. Another one is in charge of scourging the island for vegetation. Still another one gets the job of uh, looking for wood to build a fire and cook the meal. And then it comes down to the American. They say, well, you know, what, what job are we going to assign the American? Well, the American gets assigned the job of eating. And so at the end of the day, all these Asians gather around this big table after a hard day of foraging and hunting and fishing, and they prepare to feed this American, who did nothing all day but sun himself on the beach. He had a service economy. In any event, a modern economist who is looking at this little island's economy would say, oh, the American is the key to the whole thing. Without that American and his ravenous appetite, these poor Asians would have nothing to do all day. They'd all be unemployed. Well, the reality is, the Asians are perfectly capable of consuming the food themselves. Now, perhaps if they didn't have to spend all day long feeding this fat American, they wouldn't have to work as hard. Maybe they could pursue other interests that they had. The best thing that they can do to improve their own standards of living would be to kick that American off the island. Of course, when that happens, the American's in trouble because now he doesn't have five Asians doing all of his work. You know, it almost reminds me a lot of that, that book, uh, Tom Sawyer, you know, where Tom is able to convince all of his friends to whitewash his fence for him and to not only do that, but to pay him for the privilege. Because Tom Sawyer got his friends so convinced that there was so much joy in this toil that it was worth paying him. And so he got the world to, to do his chores. And little did uh, you know, Samuel Clemens realize that that little passage in that book would one day form the basis of the global economy, where America convinced a billion Chinese to paint our fence and to pay us for the privilege. That's going to end.